Hello and welcome to my tech fan. My name is Igor and in this video I want to find out which solid objects are stronger, printed with 100% infill or with maximum number of valves or perimeters. Uh, usually you will print a hollow objects, maybe two valves and the rest will be 20% of infill uh, to save some material and uh, reduce the printing time. Now uh, I have those material tests and I use those specimens uh, which uh, are solid inside and the reason it came from the mechanical engineering if I want to calculate uh, the tensile or shear stress I need a solid cross-section area. Just quick example if we take uh, this object uh, with the smallest cross-section area of 4 by 4 millimeters and uh, if it breaks on 100 kilograms that's uh, 981 Newton and if divide this with 16 square millimeters I will get the strength of uh, 61 newton per square millimeters or megapascals that's, that's the same unit here you see the printing of the maximum number of the walls it just start with the parameters until it's completely finished and now you can see it with 100 percent infill so it starts with the two lines two walls and the rest is printed inside with the 100 percent infill and the difference between these two methods can be seen even on the top layer of these test specimens and uh, what's your tip? Which will be the stronger method? Usually in my test specimens I use this second method, uh, the maximum number of the valves or perimeters or shell in some uh, earlier curve versions. Uh, but I want to find out which is stronger. Uh, I will not change my sprinting method because I want uh, future videos results to be compared with those which I did in past. But uh, it would be good to know if I need some mechanical part. So which method is better? Let's see the slicer first. So these are my test specimens for impact, bending, tensile and torque tests. And these are Stefan hooks on a scale down to 75%. And uh, in first test, I will have 100% uh, infill. If I zoom in, you will see the difference. So I have here two walls, and the rest is 100% infill. And in the second test, I will change the parameters to maximum. And now you can see that I have the maximum number of the walls of the parameters in this uh, test. First I start to print with the maximum number of the walls and the printing time will be approximately three and a half hours. Game build PLA. The printing is now approximately 50% and you can see my uh, printing parameters. And I will mark them so these are printed with maximum number of walls so a double V will be on every test specimen. And now max infill. Printing is finished and uh, I will mark these specimens with I like infill and I'm using white marker. Just quick weight test. 5.687 grams, 5.684, 5 5.890, 5.895. Well, actually, this was just for curiosity. The mass of the Maxwell version may vary yet. Depend, uh, is there any space for the last closing line in the middle? because we are limited with the diameter of the nozzle. Our first experiment will be the tensile test and I will start with this one with printed with maximum number of the walls. And this is how they look like after uh, the break and uh, very interesting I can see some differences in cross sections. 
the next comparison will be using these uh, hooks they are sent to me by Stefan only I reduced the size to 75% uh, and uh, it's kind of combination of the tensile and the bending stress And these hooks are broken too and maybe it's interesting to show the cross section so this is the wall and this is the infill max wall this is three point bending test with distance between supports of 50 millimeters and to have better effect of the printing style i raised the thickness of standard test specimens from four to six millimeters so they are now 80 by 10 by six millimeters and I started with VAL, then in field version, and then I did some modification on equipment, and then next day I repeated this. I. And I record the load at 2 mm deformation, maximal load, and also the deformation at the braking. And this is how they broke. I underestimated a little bit this plastic because it was harder to break it than I thought. Uh, I shouldn't erase the thickness, uh, but at least uh, I compare it better. And here now you can see in this table the result of this bending test. In this twist or torque test I have these test specimens with a diameter of 6 mm. And uh, one end goes into this uh, branch and the other side goes into this vise and uh, this is the torque meter which can record the peak of one movement and I'll try to record the uh, uh, torque required for make 90 degree uh, twist and also the maximal torque one point eight And 1.9 was the peak and it's broken 1.8 90 degree and it's broken now and 1.9 again the peak hmm, 2.0 2.1 and now it's broken Two point one ninety degree I still resist two point one and now it's broken so two point one was the peak too. Interesting according to the numbers the hundred percent infill was stronger and uh, also uh, it resists a little bit longer time so I can twist it more compared to this uh, printed with the maximum number of the walls. And now let's find out the effect of these uh, printing methods to the impact test. And uh, I have here these test specimens, almost standard, which I use. Only I raise the thickness to, from 4 to 6 millimeters. And I hope I will not do the same mistake, while, like with the bending test, that it will be too hard to break it. And this half kilogram hammer will be enough to, to break all these test specimens. Then I can measure uh, how brittle are these materials and which is stronger. Ball, infill, zero position, wall, infill. Test objects are broken, but now let's analyze the result. 
let's analyze the results on the scale. So this is the zero position of the hammer, and let's mark it with this line. And next two are the positions after breaking the wall version, and let's mark it with this line too. And then next two are with infill versions, and this is on this line, this is the average position. And if I measure from the zero line, I can get 26 and 28 millimeters. So this means the infill version is a little bit more brittle, but it was really hard to measure the difference. Here you can see our results on one place. And in most cases, the infill version was stronger. Not big difference, but yes, slightly uh, higher values. Maybe the reason is this for those test specimens in impact test. The mass was a little bit uh, bigger uh, with infill version, as uh, I mentioned earlier. Maybe the reason is that uh, with wall version, it depends uh, how many space we have in the middle uh, for that closing line because we are limited with the nozzle diameter. And now the conclusions. To be honest, I'm a little bit surprised with these results. I was quite sure that max wall version will be stronger without any questions. Uh, of course the difference is not that big, but now I know if I need a solid object, in that case I just raise the infill to 100% and I'm good to go. Of course it is very different if you need a hollow object with 30% infill or similar. In that case raising the number of the walls from 2 to 3 or 4 will increase the strength significantly and Stefan from CNC Kitchen created a very good video about this. About my uh, material testing uh, method, I have those standard regular test specimens which I use. And I will not change my printing method there because I want uh, new results to be comparable with those which I did in the past. So I learned something new in this project. Um, in my next video, probably I will uh, play with the durometers and measure the hardness of silver printed plastic. I hope you will follow me to that video too. Until then, thank you for watching and happy printing!